In the project this time around, you are going to start leveraging some of the database potential of a GIS system. And you're going to do that by actually creating some new information, a new feature class in your database that's going to have attribute information in it. And then later you're going to join data to that. So let's start off by looking at what we have so far. I have buildings in gray, I have trees in green, and I have a lake in blue. And this is the data that I created last time around. I'm now going to create a new element. I'm going to right click on Tree Camp Campus Database and I'm going to create a new feature class. I'm going to call this Campus Regions. This time, instead of just finishing, I'm going to click Next and I'm going to add some attribute fields. I'm going to click right here and I'm going to add the name of the region, which will be a text. I'm going to give it a classification, which will also be a text. And then I'm also going to put in number of trees. And I'm going to make this an integer so that we can map that later on if we want to. Then I can go ahead and say finish. It will create the new feature class and add the new fields so that they'll be ready to put on. I can now take this feature class, which was created as a polygon, you remember, and I'll drag it over to the map as I've done before. It's added it, and as usual, I'm going to go and change the appearance. I'm going to give no color to it, but for the outline, I'm going to select a handsome aquamarine color. Increase the points to two so I can see things a little bit better and then apply it. Now I'm ready to begin creating a polygon. And you've done this already, but we're going to mix things up just a little bit more than we did in the past. You go to edit and go to create and you go to that campus region and you click on the polygon tool as you did before. And now I'm going to scroll down a little bit closer here, and I'm going to call this region of campus the Campus West Parking Lot. I'm going to make that polygon as I did before. And I'm going to finish that up. Now remember, you can edit this if you want to. You can go to Modify, and you can edit the vertices, and you can drag these vertices around and put them exactly where you want them to be. There we go, now I'm moving it. Just make sure that you hit the check mark at the bottom to say that you've done it, so that it adjust it. So let's say I'm happy with this particular one. Now I can actually go and continue in the creation process, but before I do that, I should make sure to double click on this and I should, um, select it as an object, and when I select it as an object, I'm going to actually add attributes to it. So it's selected as an, an object, and I'm going to go up here and click Attributes. You'll see it has no name, classification, or number of trees in it. So I'm going to call it West Lot. I'm going to change the classification to Parking Lot from Null, and I'm going to assign it a number of trees and it appears that there are two trees in here. So I'm just going to give that the number tree. If you have auto apply here, it should be fine. You can also just click that to make sure that everything's changed. This should be fine now, and if I click on this by going to the Explore button under Maps, it should bring up the data that you've just added here in the pop-up. And that means that it's done, ready to go. So now I want to go back to create. So go back to edit and I want to create and I want to start adding polygons here. Um, but this time around, instead of going just to the regular polygon create a feature, you're going to be going to the autocomplete polygon. And that's going to make sure that you're snapping very clearly um, the various polygons so that you don't end up with these little dangles of lines. The polygons are right next to each other. That's the goal here. 
in order to facilitate that, make sure that you have turned on your snapping up here. Make sure snapping is on and set the snapping tolerance to something relatively small. I've made mine 10 pixels. That seems to work. You might want to adjust that a little bit. And now I'm going to go to autocomplete. Before I go to autocomplete, I'm just going to zip out here just a little bit. So let me go to explore again because I'm going to add a big part of campus and I'm just going to call it West Campus. So back to the edit now and back to create. <clears throat> Hit that autocomplete and I'm going to click on this here and I'm going to draw a line that will represent West Campus or a polygon rather that will represent West Campus. Again, I may want to modify things a little bit, but I'm going down here and I'm going to finish that polygon by clipping on the edge of that other one, clicking on the edge of that other one. And when I do that and double click it, it should create a new polygon that will match up perfectly with the old one. Then, as before, I'm going to go to attributes and I'm going to change the name of that attribute and I'm going to call it West Campus. And instead of having this as a parking lot, I'm going to classify it as buildings and the number of trees I'm going to have to count later. So I'll just throw in a number here of 25. We'll have to check that later on. And then you're going to do this for your region and create a whole bunch of polygons. So I'm going to stop the video right here and I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm done. I have now created a whole bunch of campus regions and I have filled in the attributes for all of them. And we can take a look at this by right clicking on the data and going to the attribute table. And that will bring up um, the whole table of data in which we can see the names of each of the lots and also their classification as either parking lots, buildings, and the number of trees. You should make sure to capture an image that shows that you've created this part because the next thing you're going to be doing is joining some data to it. And I know this is sort of an arbitrary exercise. Um, you could just create this data from the start, but I wanted you to get the idea of what a join can do. Um, what I have done is I've created a separate file. It's a CSV file. Um, that's a spreadsheet file saved as a CSV just like you looked at last time, and it uses the names of each of the um, each of the regions, and then I've arbitrarily assigned it a color as either green or gold. So I've saved that file, and then ne the next thing we're going to do is we're going to join that onto the campus region attribute data. So let's get ready to do that. Um, I have to turn off ArcGIS Pro and turn it back on so I make sure that that file is ready to go. Okay, I'm back where I was before and now we're going to click on the Analysis tab and go to Tools and we are going to do a join. So we're just going to join um, the field using the data management that should be just fine, or add the join is probably what we want to do right here. Add a join. Um, the input table that we're going to use is going to be the ca campus regions table. Um, and the field we're going to jo join will be the name. Um, then we're going to join a table. And to do that, we're going to have to go and find it. And we're going to find that by going to the tree campus data. Um, which again is going to be in my C drive. That's where I keep this stuff. So let's see if we go to mapping and tree campus. And there it is. I've called it green and gold. So I'm going to say OK to that and put that CSV in there. And then I've got to give it a field name as well, and it's populated those fields, and it's just going to be the name as well. I'm going to validate that join to make sure that it's looking good, and it seems like it is a valid join, so I'm going to run it now. It has completed it, and it says it's added the join. 
and indeed it has. You can see that the color is now added. So that's all we're going to handle this time around. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about how to use all these database things in the next video.